Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. We're the newcomers. Hey, we've got quite a show for you today. It's time once again, of course, for Mailbag Monday. And we're going to talk about loud talkers. Alligator action. We have another episode of Ask Amy. Child labor in the villages. Child labor in the villages. Mm -hmm. All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We hope you enjoyed Thursday's video. That was quite a different take on single life yes. in the villages. And we've got to be honest with you. We interact with lots of people. We tend to gravitate toward positive people. And most of the people we talk to, the singles, are enjoying life here. Yes. But that was another viewpoint and certainly one that was worth seeing. Yes. We have a lot of fun during the week. And uh, I try to, you know, she teases me and I tease her and we do this and that. Well, let me tell you a story that happened this week. I went to the grocery and I was just minding my own business and my, just doing my thing. And the phone rings. So I answer it. And Jerry is on the other end, of course. Oh, he wants me to pick him up something, right? Whatever. But he says, Linda, we have a man here at the house. And I go, oh, really? He goes, yes. And he's hungry. <laughs> He's the man. <laughs> like, hurry up, get my food. Come on. <laughs> well, we we um, we keep a good stock here in the house, but for some we reason did. that day it was kind of low. Yeah, it was low. I mean, we had tuna fish and stuff, but it was in the can. Yeah, and he can't he can't figure out how to open that can. So there was a hungry man in the house. Uh, of course, I'm just teasing, <laughs> ladies. Please don't gang up on me. Oh I'm, yeah, you can gang up on him. You should. Yeah. You really should. <laughs> But she came home with a little ham that was just, oh my gosh, it was so good. It was very good. It, uh, you know, I had black forest ham, a regular ham, and it was a little one, $10. But you know, hey, I, look at a lot of sandwiches come out of that. So I brought it home and he thought it was delish. I bet when you tuned in, you didn't know it was going to be this exciting, did you? We're talking about <laughs> ham. This week was very special. On Friday... We hit 65,000 subscribers. That is great. We never dreamed it would happen, but uh, we did. And it's all thanks to you guys. Yeah, absolutely. So th thanks to you. And let's keep it going. Let's get 100. <laughs> Tell all your friends and make sure that you're subscribed. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get started with our viewer video question. Send us your questions. We got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. Hey, Jerry and Linda. It's your favorite Daughters of the Villages. And we have two questions for you guys today. Our first question is about the Paradise Rec Center, a.k.a. home to our favorite pool. Yep. We know it's supposed to be remodeling, having some renovations done. Would you mind going on a golf cart ride to see how that's going for us? Perfect. And we want to know, what is the best pizza mm. in the villages? We're from New York, so we know a little bit about pizza. Okay. Give us some good advice. We want to know for when we go down there this summer. Yeah. So until then, we'll, we'll see, see you when, when we, we get, get there. there. That was Victoria and Janine. Aren't they cute? And good singers, too. I love All right, Victoria. girls. I'm sorry. I said I love the name Victoria. It's Victoria. just beautiful. <laughs> smells like victory. Vicky. In the morning. <laughs> or Tori. Challenge accepted. Now, we don't know what the best pizza is because we don't eat pizza all that much. I like it a lot. And I would even like it for dinner. Jerry thinks it's a snack. It's not really It's meal. something you have after you eat supper before you go to bed. No, 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 no. While you're watching TV. Pizza is a meal. It's got all the fruits and the vegetables. Like it. It's got all the meat in it. It's got bread. It's a meal. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a meal. I like a uh, supreme pizza without the mushrooms and olives. Uh, I like it all. I like all the meats, like your pepperoni, yeah. sausage. I do like green peppers and uh, onions, too. Yeah. And my brother-in-law, Tom, out there, has given me a new outlook on pizza. He started me liking pepperoni with olives, green olives on it. Oh, delish. Some people don't believe you can put pineapple on a pizza. What do you think? Eh, it's okay. I like. It's I, okay. I think okay. I like pineapple. It's okay like with pineapple. chicken. Okay. Okay, and they also want an update on the Paradise Recreation Center. Mm -hmm. That's way up yonder, yeah. so we don't get up there all that much. Although we do like Spanish Springs, and we do like to go up there. Love it. We will try to check that out for you, and uh, you girls keep singing. 
<laughs> and uh, send us another question or comment whenever you get the urge because it's quite entertaining. Thank you all so much. Oh, by the way, do you like deep dish pizza or uh, thin crust? You know, I used to like deep dish a lot. And then I got so, I felt too heavy with it. So I really like the thin crackery crust almost. The crackery crust. The crackery crust. I like to crunch. While we're on the subject of videos, please send us your viewer videos. Just remember that they have to be in landscape format. Now, some of you are thinking, oh, I could never do that. How could I do that? Well, obviously you can't. You need a little tripod or a steady friend. You get you a tripod and you'll get an attachment like this. And your phone will then sit right on top of there in that little attachment. And you push record. And you keep it about four feet, five feet from you and fill up your, the screen with your face. And talk to your microphone. Give us your question. Then when you're done, it'll be a file on your computer. Keep it to a minute or so. And if you have the ability, if you are savvy enough to put the, the title in the subject line when you send it in an email, that would be great. Yeah. Put your name and the name of your video. Let us know. And we have a special project. You don't even know, do you? No, what is it? <laughs> Uh-oh. Yesterday, I had a viewer, some dear friends actually, call us and tell us about a very cool and amazing thing that happened here. It was like an angel thing. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a good deed or a tale of paying it forward, mm -hmm. you know, lost wallets, return to owner, lost purse, somebody that bought your meal at a restaurant, if you have a really good story about something that happened to you, put it in a little video like that about one minute long and send it to us. We're going to compile them for a show called Angels in the Villages. Who doesn't like a good angel show? I love that. Yeah. Love that. So please send those in. Send your viewer videos in. And remember, what was that old TV show? You can be a star. Oh, wait. Before you sit down, she's, she went and adjusted the camera. This is why she looks so tall. She's got a booster. Got me a booster seat. That was given to her by our friend Holly. Holly, Holly and Al, thank you very much. That is a deluxe, baby. <laughs> that is so helpful. That is so good. You're sitting on hand. I, I used it last night playing cards. Yeah, very good. <laughs> it's great. I told you we would talk about loud talkers, and I want to I want to bring this up because I think it's funny. Funny in a sort of I want to slap you kind of way. Uh, I was at the doctor's office the other day, and a lady right across the way, her phone rings with a big, loud, obnoxious ring, and she's on the phone, and she's, hello, oh, I'm at the doctor's office, yeah, yeah, I know it, I know it, I've been waiting about a half an hour, yeah, after this, I'm going to go shopping, uh, Bob needs a, needs some uh, Band-Aids, you know, he, his rash is acting up again, and uh I mean, come on, people, don't you? I'd be so embarrassed. Are you embarrassed when that happens? There are a lot of people that use their phone like that. Good and it's Lord. just like, oh, they don't know that the rest of the world is right around them. If your phone rings, you you cover it up and you, I will. And you run out the door. I will. And you don't because you don't want anybody to hear you ring. Oh, no. But, wow, man, that, that happens all the time. You ever have it happen in a movie theater? Oh, <laughs> you're going to get death threats. <laughs> that really, really <laughs> makes me use my self-control. All right, let's go right to our first question. This is from Gail in Virginia. Gail writes, I know that only courtyard villas and veranda homes have fences. What about the premier and designer homes? Since they are special, can they have fences? Other than the homes that you mentioned, your veranda homes, your villa homes, homes don't have fences here. There always seems to be one or two outliers to that but I called the research this, and they said once in a while there might be something, but ordinarily no, no fences allowed. Now, if you live on a preserve or on one of the boundaries of the villages, maybe the edge of the village has a horse farm on the other side, there's going to be a fence in the back. Mm -hmm. If you live on a preserve, there's going to be a, probably a retaining wall and a fence on the back. Mm -hmm. But you can't add your own fence to it to kind of to kind of fence yeah. in your yard. Yeah. And they do that for consistency. Yeah. All fences, you know, would have to look the same ordinarily. Mm -hmm. And within a, within a villa neighborhood, the fences are the same. They look good. Yeah. And that's what they try to keep they it here. Look Looking good. good. Look. This is from Mary Jo. Everything always looks so neat and clean when you travel throughout the village. Does everyone hire people to take care of their property? Um, 
Only the lazy ones. <laughs> and that's the majority of us. I'm sorry, I put the, I put the right in front of your face. Um, most people do hire out to, to have their yards done because we don't have room for all that yard stuff. So. Yeah, you got your lawnmower, you got your weed eater, you got your blower, you got cans of gasoline. Yeah. You might have an edger in there. Yeah, that's a lot. There are people that do. We have neighbors that do cut their grass, and it looks great. And But uh, I'd say the majority of the people haven't hired out. People that cut their own grass and take care of their own yards usually have the best-looking yards. Uh, you know, that's probably true. They're very yeah. meticulous. They baby it. Very meticulous, and we, I love that. We had a lawn service come today, and uh, mm -hmm. they fertilized, and yeah. they did they yeah. do a good job. Our lawn looks pretty good. Yeah. We yeah. Get, we're getting a lot of weeds, though. Mm -hmm. Our neighbor, they don't... Some of them don't treat their yards, yeah, and uh, you get those those little creepy weeds that come in and yeah, pop up everywhere. Yeah. And they grow three times faster than grass. Yeah. And I love how they edge. Uh, everybody edges down the street, and I think that's really neat looking. So most people do. Hire. You're right, though. The, the, the pride is incredible here. You will see people 80 years old out pulling weeds in their yeah. yard. Yeah and doing yard work and sweeping their driveways. This is a very clean and beautiful development. The villages, and that's what that's one reason we like it so much. Yes, yes. Child labor in the villages. We saw it firsthand this past week because we had our grandkids over. <laughs> we did. And uh, they love to, to get into grandpa's wallet. <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't actually get into it, but they'll yeah. they'll uh, say any way we can make some money, make Grandpa. Some money, Grandpa. So we turned them loose this week. Look at these guys; they're out there pulling weeds and uh, using that donut cutter yeah. and picking up all the extra little doodads and taking them out front. And we really have a good time when they're here. And I think it teaches them a little bit about working and making money. And you, you know, you need to have the, some of the granddaughters here to help you with the dishes. And yes. That, oh, yeah, this, that sounds a little sexist here. We do the dishes, and you could do the yard. Why don't you do the dishes? Well, I will. <laughs> I, that's why I like paper plates. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, you're right. And I, I do want to teach my little granddaughter how to cook and how to bake, because that's so much fun. And I do have in the future planning to have a tea party and have her involved in making things. So, yeah, I have that planned. Yeah, lots of things. Right. This is from Kathleen in Georgia. Hi, Linda and Jerry. Do single people live in the villages or those who have lost their spouse stay living in the villages? If something were to happen to one of you, would you remain in the villages as a single? I really enjoy all your videos. Thank you for all your research and fun entertainment. Um, there are a lot of single people in the villages that are widowed, and a lot of them do stay. And there are some that leave, that go back to family members to kind of be around and be with their, their family. But uh, a lot of them stay here. We know quite a few single people here in the villages. And like mm -hmm. I said, our, our mm -hmm. Thursday show was about that very yeah. topic. And it's not hard to find people yeah. that stay here. Yeah. We know one good friend that recently lost a spouse, and she is moving mm -hmm. back to Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. But we also know other people that chose to stay here because they feel like they have a lot of support here. A lot of support, and they're close by people, and the neighborhoods work together pretty much. Uh, they're they're close-knit. Um, but as far as Jerry and I are concerned, um, right now I think we'll stay. You'd stay if I kicked the bucket? Probably, for a while, maybe a year or so, just to see how it goes. And see, you know, if I really do love it, I don't want to pick up and move that, you know, that month after or two months after. That that'd be silly. Uh, I think I'd give it a shot. You gonna date? <laughs> Are you tell me I can't. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Do. Oh, no, Jerry. There's only one Jerry. <laughs> we also went to Ocala with the grandkids to a place called the Canyon Zipline and Adventure Park. What a place! We picked up a brochure. I didn't even know a place like this existed here. That's what it looks like. We're going to have to go back and do a show. Oh. That's a better <laughs> What's one. What's the same? That's better. There you go. Yeah. I didn't know there were... These look like, if not mountains, big hills. Yeah. With a river running between them. Yeah. And zip lines over the thing. It looks it's like just about, in Colorado, huh? What was it? <laughs> 10 or 15 minutes yeah. from Ocala. 
Yeah. So it's right there. It's yes. not far away. Mm -hmm. Zip lines. They had a walking bridge over a gorge. Yeah. It looked a little bit scary. We didn't do it. We just watched the grandkids, uh, two of the older grandkids and, uh, and their our dad. Son. And that was so much fun. But, you know, we thought we'd stay around and watch. Uh, and it was great fun to watch them go through the trees. Three but hours. But it was a three-hour tour. Yeah, it was the three hours. <laughs> two, two really, hour three. it's a major operation, and it looks first class to me. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see if they're up for us coming and doing a little yeah. show there. They have horseback riding. They have kayaking. Mm -hmm. And a whole bunch of zip lines. Yeah. So, Sounds like a lot of fun. The Canyon Zip Line and Adventure Park. <laughs> yeah. Time once again for an episode of Ask Amy. Hi, I have a question about when does a trust make sense for a couple over a traditional will? It really depends on the situation and the client's family dynamics and the type of assets the clients have, whether they're married or single. But we do have some triggers where we say, yeah, it really makes sense to do a trust when you have more than one piece of property, when we have a special needs beneficiary, we have a beneficiary that's a minor, and we wanna retain their share. But it really would help to sit down with a state planning attorney, talk about your family dynamics, the type of assets you have, and how you want those assets to pass when you die. And then the attorney can give you better guidance on whether or not you should do a will or a trust. Hope that helps. I know it's a simple question, but definitely recommend you talk to an estate planning attorney. Obviously, Audra and myself um, are able to meet with you if you have any further questions. Have a great one. Bye. Thank you, Amy. Those are all questions that we had when we moved here. And in fact, that's how we met Amy. We went up there to have her do our mm -hmm. trust, trust and uh, totally 100% satisfied. Absolutely. Yeah. Chad and Sue are snowflakes. Now they're from Milwaukee and they say, we were wondering since we saw recently that some of the golf courses in your development were shut down. Just how many are there? Won't shutting some courses down mean that some people will not get to play golf? You know, at, uh, you're probably right about that. I was able to play this past week. Um, you know how you put in your request and you play, and no problem. The week before, we didn't get to play. But a lot of people are vying for a limited number of golf spots in the executive courses. I think you'd have better look on the championship courses. That's going to cost you. But it, uh, they, they are not free. The executive courses are free. Now, you do have to pay a trail pass to ride your cart, or you can buy an annual pass. That's not free. But I think shut, the more courses that shut down, the less executive courses there would be. And, you know, since you're wondering, I looked into how many courses are there here in the villages. And there are about 40 executive golf courses. I actually called the villages this morning and talked to them. There are 40 executives. Now, those are nine whole courses. They may have one or two par fours. Some of them don't have any, but it's free. Yeah. There are 13 championship courses and more being built, and that's not free. That's pretty expensive. Uh, I don't do it much because I just don't, at my skill level, I don't see the worth in spending a lot of money for golf. And we usually uh, will go outside the villages to play championship-style golf because you can get specials and... Mm -hmm and the Groupons and discounts, and you can shop around for where to go. Here, it's going to cost me about 60 bucks to play in the winter or 70 you know, in that neighborhood. And uh, outside the villages, you can play for 30 or 40 at the most. Now, we also have pitch and putts here. Pitch and putts are smaller courses. You're not allowed to take your golf cart on there. You have to walk. They would uh, have holes maybe 60 yards and shorter where you would only need a couple of irons and a putter. And you could even get the clubs there and the rent bags there. And they'll give you a ball if you don't have a ball. And uh, they're nice. But you would have to either walk on when there's a vacancy or, or make a reservation to play those too. Now, that's the first time we ever saw the uh, love bugs. It was in a May or September time. And boy, they were flying all over. I remember that. I don't mm -hmm. know why I remember that, but I do. I think there's one in Richmond and there's another one called the Mickey Lee. Yeah. And there are some putting courses too, which are like miniature golf mm -hmm. on steroids. Yeah. These are well-kept 
golf courses where they're just for putting. Mm -hmm. So, and some of them are long. They're not part two. They're not all part two. I mean, you will, yeah, you'll and, have some real challenges there, but there are three of those. So, and there's no little, uh, little windmills to go through or anything no. like that. It's just strictly. It's like a real golf course. Uh, yeah. So 40 executives, 13 championship, and hopefully more to come. Yeah. Okay, this is from Mitchell and Ann Smith in Tennessee. Greetings, Jerry and Linda. I was wondering what kind of suntan lotion you guys use living in the villages. I was also wondering what make uh, and model golf cars you guys drive. And in answering that, does it get good gas mileage? And as always, we'll see you when we get there. Well, first off, sunscreen. Uh, we don't use enough of it. Uh, we should use it every single day. It should be a ritual, um, but we like the suntan lotion for kids. We, Jerry gets it in his eyes sometimes and it really burns, so he's got to be real careful. So, But we do use sunscreen. Um, and as far as the golf cart, we have a Yamaha. I don't, I don't, I don't use it near as often as I should. No. Yeah. Um, my uh, dermatologist climbs my tree all the time. Mm -hmm. When I see them, uh, I try to, and I have good intentions. Yeah. But she's right; I get it in my eyes. So a roll-on is really the best for my face. So I don't, have to, yeah. you know, I was doing a spray for a while. I couldn't figure out why that was getting my eyes. Yeah, <laughs> spray. And right. when you put the lotion on, yeah. your hands are then slippery. And then he wipes his eyes because he's sweating, and then the sweat. So and the, little the little the little stick in. or roll-on yeah. is is it really seems great to be for best that. For him. As far as golf carts and how far can you go? Well, they have a about a five gallon gas tank and you get about 50 miles to a gallon. So honestly, when we fill up our golf cart, $5 or five gallons of gas costs about $15. We don't fill it up for a month or two. Right. We can go yeah, a long, long way. We go a long, long time without filling that baby up. Yeah. Our golf carts are, uh, see I did it again. Of course. Our golf carts are Yamaha gas golf carts. She has a 2016. I have a 17. <coughs> Mine is Quiet Tech. Yeah. It doesn't make it much difference. It's no, this, no it's much. It's this much quieter than hers. But uh, that's what we use. We have what pre-owned Yamaha gas golf carts. Mm -hmm. Hit it, Wally. Hi, no. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, let's do, try do, that. Do, do. Oh. <laughs> okay. Do we have a show for you? <laughs> the answer to last week's driveway party was jumbles. <laughs> Alice, Alice. I can't see. Need to change your name to Alex. Oh, Alice. You. Alice, change your name to Alex. Good. Real good. I got mm -hmm. real good. Momix Alex. And on the Friday is Lori Morgan's gonna be here. No? <laughs> I can't do this. I cannot do this. <laughs> After you laugh, it's hard to get the laugh out of your eyes. <laughs> Not you. Hello, everybody. Teresa Black writes, and she asks, did you have two cars before you moved? And if you did, did you sell one of them? If you sold one, do you regret it now? And love your show. Looking forward to it, Teresa. Teresa, we had three vehicles before we left, and that's not counting my Kubota tractor. Uh... <laughs> We did sell two of them, the cars and the tractor. We had a Ford 150 pickup truck, and we had a Jeep Wrangler. Oh, that was fun. a beauty, beauty. I don't miss it at all, though. I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah. A golf cart gives you the same experience that you have in a Jeep with the top down. You know, yeah, it does. you're right out there. You put the front window down. You know, the sides are all open. The back, you feel like you're, you're in the Jeep. It's an adventure, is what it is. <laughs> but we sold two of them, and we sold that tractor. That was hard to sell. Yeah, but we uh, no, time. we don't regret it at all because our garage is so small that we hardly have room to put all our bikes and our kayak and <laughs> two golf carts and one yeah. car and yeah. junk. junk. When we come in with junk, we throw it in the garage floor. We step around it. 
I pulled a muscle going through there the other day. <laughs> We're not the neatest people around. <laughs> no. Uh, we, you know, our house looks lived in is what it does. We call, yeah, we're, we, our house is lived in. I like that. This is from Julie and Dave. We watch your channel all the time and see you attending lots of lively events. When an event is held at a rec center or a driveway party, who pays for the food, beverages, and the entertainment? How do the guests get invited? What time do these events typically start and end? Okay, a lot of questions here uh, to answer. Um, we go to rec centers uh, for parties. We've gone to driveway parties. And who pays for the food? Um, Have you thought this out? No, not really. Actually, uh, lots of times they're pitch-ins. So when you go to a driveway party, you're going to bring something to pitch in and they put it on tables under the uh, under a tent or else in the garage. And then people sit out in the driveway in the streets for the party and the music. So usually people bring food. So uh, unless the person who's giving it might have a big cooler of water for people, maybe, but uh, mostly it's people bring their own. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ray Herford, the king of driveway parties. Hi, Ray. <laughs> He moved recently. He's probably going to start throwing some bashes out in that new premier neighborhood. Hint, hint. Uh, but people uh, just come to enjoy. But yeah. the band usually yeah. is either hired by the homeowner or we'll do it for tips. Right. You know, uh, Petrina. Yeah. You know, she's great. She she works for tips sometimes mm -hmm. and she's very popular around the villages. They'll, have a, they'll all have a tip jar out there mm -hmm. and you'll put yeah. money in that. If you go to a driveway party, that's different from a driveway concert. Okay. A driveway party is where you sit around in lawn chairs. They may or may not have singing, but usually people pitch in. They'll bring a, a dish to share, yeah, and right. they'll they'll share that. But if you're at an upscale like Ray's driveway parties, there will be a food truck. Yeah. Maybe it's Mystic Ice Cream or yeah. or Dave's Horn Dogs or yeah. or whatever it is. There'll be a truck there that will sell you uh, food. Yeah. But no, the, the villages does not pay for any of that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to a, an event put on by your realtor, usually they'll have some paybacks there. Well, they'll give you, you know, ice cream or maybe they'll have a, a smorgasbord or mm -hmm. I believe that's a buffet. Yeah, yeah. And as far as getting invited, uh, mostly their uh, neighborhood parties are, you know, they put a call out. Hey, friends, we're having a party. Come on over. So it's kind of word of mouth. So if you are driving down any street in the villages <laughs> and you see cars parked on the side and you hear music playing or you see people in the street, you can join in. I don't know anybody that would say, hey, no. where's your invitation? No, no they don't have an no, invitation. No. Do we need a theme song for entertainment? I think we do. But I do. I do you all hate our theme songs? Would you like to have one for entertainment? And, you know, we have one for Ask Amy. We have one for Bubble Wrap. We have one for Out and About. Mm -hmm. Do we need a theme song for uh, oh, we entertainment? we have Sweet and Salty, too. Sweet and Salty? Yeah, we need an entertainment. Let us know. Uh, you want us to get rid of those theme songs, or do you like the theme songs, or do you really not even care? It's time for entertainment. Entertainment in the Villages is so much fun. You can go to anything, any concerts at the Sharon, the Savannah Center. You can go to the Sawgrass Grove. Um, and a lot of the restaurants will have live music in the evenings, in the afternoons. We've but been to the town squares twice this past week. We have. We've enjoyed meeting people there, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Savannah Center this week on Friday, March 22nd, is the Bronx Wanderers. This is the Savannah Center. And on Saturday, Dave Mason's Traffic Jam. Now, when you go to the Sharon this week, uh, Lori Morgan's coming on Friday. Yeah. She, she's a great singer. Yeah. Like us, she's getting up in years. Yeah. But uh, she was born in 1959, in case you're wondering. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know how I know that? Because I, I, I like reels on uh, Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And I saw a reel with her husband, Keith Whitley's grave, and her, her space is next to him. It said 1959. You said, she's her, getting, she said, you said she's getting up there. Well, she is. She's, she's 64 young, years old. She's, 60, almost she's 65 years old. Than us. She's almost on Social Security. Oh, my gosh. And then on Saturday, the Irish Comedy Tour. That oh. Should, oh, don't you? That would be very funny. And then Sunday, Judy Collins. I remember one of her songs, Send in the Clowns, right? Could you sing a little bit of that for no, me? No, I cannot. You can't. <laughs> anyway, enjoy. Yeah, and those, don't forget, 365 nights a year, you can go to those town squares. Mm -hmm. Alligators. Mm -hmm. Told you we'd talk about them. Oh. We love to see the alligators. And I, and I love to fish, and I love to kayak. However, 
this past week, and I'm not, I'm not going to give any names or exact locations, but from all accounts I could read, right next door to the villages here, right smack next door. In fact, when you go out on Belle Glade Golf Course, there's a fence, and on the other side of that fence is Pembroke. And it said that there was an attack by an alligator at Pembroke. A fellow that was fishing was reeling in a fish, and an alligator came up and got his hand and rolled. And uh, he lost his hand for sure. And I don't know about, about how, what uh, the outcome was, but that's a little bit scary. Yeah. Because, you know, they're alligators can be lurking out there and charge out of the water at the last. And I tend to dismiss it. You know, I'm trying to, I try to talk her into going with me and, mm -hmm. and stuff. But that gives you a second thoughts, doesn't it? Yes. I'm afraid that things like that are going to be the, the death knell for alligators. And I think they did go back and get the alligator, they and did. that's what I heard. So uh, they took care of that. These are pictures people sent from around the villages this past week. I just got these pictures from alligators I've seen. It's springtime. It's mating season. They're more active. Yeah. We all get more active during mating season. <laughs> so be careful around all the bodies of water. I saw a lady walking her dogs right down at the water's edge at a very place where I've seen so many alligators, not even funny. Mm -hmm. Don't let your dogs get within a lunge of that water. Those gators will come out and get them. You saw that lady last year that was walking her dog and got killed by an alligator somewhere in Florida. Mm -hmm. The answer to last week's jumble was driveway parties. Lots of you got that. I think my clue made it very easy. easy. This one's a little bit tougher. See if you can get this one. This Sumter icon is rounding third and heading for home. That's a tough one. I'll give you a hint. There's three words, three words in the answer. I hope you get it. If you do get it, don't write it down below. No, no. Just let us know you got it without telling the answer. Don't spoil it for the other folks. It's time for Sweet and Salty. start with the sweet and that's coming from Roberta. I live in the villages vicariously with you two. I'm an 80 year old widow with medical issues from Southern Ohio. You two are such a delight for me to watch every week. Keep up the good work. I have become an authority on the villages with my peers. Love you too. Oh that's sweet. Oh, thank you Roberta. Yeah, I appreciate Roberta. you watching Very nice. us. Yes. By the way, anytime regarding the villages, you see the initials TV. It's not like a TV. It's the villages. And I had I had learned that the hard way. Yeah. But uh, Roberta, you are so sweet. Thank you. And on the other hand, there's stormy weather. Stormy weather writes, <laughs> dyed and fake hair, still trying to not look old. Why? Uh -huh. Well, for me, you know, I want to look good, so, so I... I'm doing the best I can, stormy weather. And died, D-I-E-D. -E hmm. Is that what it said? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I died. I died. Maybe I look dead, Jerry. Do I look dead? <laughs> look at that. Do I look uh, dead? No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, she's at that stage in life where she yeah. would, if she, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble here. You tell them. I don't know what you're trying to say. Well, I, just don't I enjoy uh, the, uh, the the color of my hair. I'm not ready to go gray yet. Um, my grandmother was gray. My mother was gray. And they came from brown hair and brownish hair. And brown hair people don't turn gray beautifully, I don't think. <laughs> Sorry, Grandma and Mom. But I just, I just would rather have this for a little while longer. Yeah. I'm not 70 yet. So I'll know what will happen. Maybe in this, when I'm in the 70s, I'll maybe start doing that. But not ready. Not ready. It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a fake eyelashes. I don't have fake nails. I don't have fake anything except my hair. <laughs> a couple of tattoos is it. <laughs> it's time for those shout outs. At this time, we'd like to recognize some of the friends of our channel, and you see them scrolling there. Jim DeCastro is the first one on that list. 
Of the notifications we get from Facebook, it tells us who our most actively involved viewers are. And these are in order from the last few weeks and ranked by the number of interactions or, or checks or looks that you gave us. So these are the best of the best. All those names up there are our very top viewers. We want to thank every one of you. And some of you have hit that little dollar sign to make a donation to our channel. We appreciate that. And you're up there too. Cheryl and Doug Campbell. They're from Rhode Island. Super nice folks. We had uh, the pleasure of meeting them on our recent cruise. They're coming for a lifestyle visit in May, and they've booked another cruise with us next February. We'll see you when you get here, guys. Mm -hmm. Be fun again. Well, Leanne Blessing lives here in the villages with her husband with her husband, Michael, and she says they love it. We saw her husband, Michael, perform magic at the Wildwood Community Center, and that was a blast. Yeah, he was good. He <laughs> was good. good. He did a really nice really job. Really good. Jerry and Ralph are from Dwaynesburg, New York. We met them outside the uh, Bluefin restaurant a couple weeks ago. They were so nice. Mm -hmm. They saw us eating in the restaurant, and they waited outside a long time until we got finished. <laughs> oh, my God. And we really enjoyed meeting them. And they say they can't wait till they can come back and they're going to maybe purchase a home this fall. All right. Well, here are Steve and Mary Whitaker. They're in front of the famous sign. They say they saw our videos and came down and purchased a home in Dabney. Well, congratulations and welcome to the Villages. Tim and Kirsten recently moved here from Pennsylvania. They found a beautiful home in Lake Denham. They moved here with their dog, Ragnar. <laughs> now, that's a name off of that TV series, The Vikings. Mm -hmm. That was a great, great series. But that's a cool name for a dog, isn't that's it? That's a good name. That's going to do it for this week's edition of... Bag Monday. We had several emails this week of people that told us they were not getting our notifications anymore. Mm -hmm. They had been unsubscribed by YouTube. Please check and make sure you're still subscribed. And that way you'll be notified and you ring that little bell for sure. You'll be notified of every single video we put out and that'll be great. You won't miss out on any of the fun. Yeah. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. Until next time. See you when you get here.